Let me everybody. Um, hi. Um, I'll be shortly starting, let people just roll in so slowly. Um, I pitched doing a live mocap uh, session here to the Blender community, community and they kind of scratched their head. Are you sure you want to do this? I went, yes. Uh, I just believe that the technology and hardware and software is at a point that it's actually usable. Um, I've been uh, teaching uh, 3D for the past 15 years to students, professionals, educators, um, anyone who wants to learn 3D, they kind of go with me and they learn along the way. So my session here is to, to just show a real time, how would I work in a studio environment or just at home? Because this is a one man setup, right? I'll, I'll be doing everything while I'm trying to uh, record also the, 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 the mocap, right? So I'm, hopefully I'm plugged in and I'm just, it's gonna just magically work and I'll be able to demo uh, whatever I have prepared here for uh, the session. So I'll jump into my short presentation so you'll have an outline of, of what's going on here. Um, so yeah, my name is Bartosz and I'm passionate about how to learn 3D and just teaching 3D. Uh, even to instructors or people who, I give feedback to instructors who teach. Uh, and Epic Games hired me to help them on the fellowship and this is kind of where I'm coming from uh, with this whole thing. So um, I help other students and instructors to just learn how to do 3D um, efficiently and just get the job done. So real time um, technology is revolutionizing entertainment and gaming and one of the most, um, you know, things that people want to try out, try out is mocap because mocap is so intriguing and interesting to work with. Um, and you get the real-time feedback. So I usually work in Unreal Engine, but today I'll be working in Blender and maybe showing a little bit snippets of what you can do with Blender going into Unreal Engine if you're thinking about. Can I get a, maybe a raise of hands who has dealt with mocap suits or markerless suits or anything to do with mocap? All right, there's a few hands, cool. Not too many hands, so that makes me happy, so I won't be, um, because when I went into this industry, I learned in the past year um, that this is a very established industry for the past 25 years. People have so much experience with mocap, while I have maybe one, one two years of actually diving into this. And when I dive into this stuff, I go really into it. Like I, I try the most DIY things and up to the most expensive mocap suits I can get my hands on. And I'll try to demo a few of these um, on videos or, or just in live, but I prefer to do it live. Um, so just a quick introduction. Um, this is the breakdown. It's a five minute session of setting up. I'm actually set up here. Uh, I'll do a demo of a virtual camera because my main focus is here to show you how to work in real time in Blender because that's something that not, not a lot of people do working in real time, right? Um, the real time pipeline in Blender, what it is, the demo of the mocap, getting set up in mocap, and combining all this in a real time pipeline, right? You can see here I'm demoing, uh, I mean, this is a picture from a studio that I had the opportunity to work with, so I went through even the most expensive mocap, so I kind of have a large, a good, good picture of what you can get out of mocap, right? And what are the downsides of these suits and upsides of them? Because there's, you can get a lot out of them, but you need to really know, you really need to know what you want to get out of these things, right? So I'll, I'll start with something very simple. Uh, I love this uh, virtual camera, virtual camera by Tracky, right? I'll just jump into Blender. Now, Virtual Camera is an app that I actually absolutely love because, let me just quickly connect to my Wi-Fi. Now, I, I carry around a Wi-Fi router because I would not be able to do this on the network here because it has to be configured with firewalls down, everything has to work, 5G, uh, so the suit will connect and also the phone will connect. So we'll be doing two things at, at the same time, a real-time camera demo, live demo, and I'll maybe ask someone from the audience to film me while I'm be doing something in the suits, right? So this could be a collaborative thing. And collaborative is the keyword here because I'm inspired by what uh, Epic Games is doing with Unreal uh, Engine fellowships. Um, I, just a quick question. Is anybody familiar with the term exquisite corpse? 
Wow, one hand, awesome. So Exquisite Corpse, just to, just to give it a, a rundown, um, actually it's the best to just show a video, right? So Toonami here is a great example of an exquisite corpse, where one animator knows what, fin what, what starts and when the frame ends, or there's a particular object. I'll just talk over this so uh, it won't get in the way. So basically this is a great example uh, done years ago of an exquisite corpse where one animator starts working with, um, they, they basically agree that transitions is the main focus of an animation, right? So, but it, it can be anything, right? It can be an object, it can be a character in this case that just gets totally transformed in each artist's mind, right? And I'm fascinated by this because this is a way to get a lot of people working on one project and get a unique thing out of it. Um, maybe MTV does it with logos. Rick and Morty did this also. You can check it out. Um, there's a, there's a, so, some examples of the exquisite corpse idea. It comes from the French language, exquisite corpse. I'm not, I can't, can't pronounce it. But it means basically where somebody takes uh, an image and continues working over it, right? So this is just a, this is a great example of an exquisite. It just keeps on going and going. It's insane. It's, it just keeps on going and going and going. And the main theme here is the character that gets transformed into different uh, positions and the animators work on the transitions. So uh, I was supposed to do the demo of the tracky demo, but I got, <laughs> of course, sidetracked. So I'm just going to all get plugged in now. Launch my camera app. Be sure I'm connected to the right network. So I just plug in my network card. So I'm going to be plugging in and plugging out because this thing doesn't have internet. So it will be a, bit, a, bit, a little bit of a plug and plug play situation here. Um, all right, we're in the correct network. Let's just go virtual camera. And just start serving, right? So I'm going to quickly scan my code here. So it should just connect. All right, cool. And it just connects to the, to the app. I see the view, same from here, from Blender. And it should be able to work with just, just by scrolling. It's really cool. I use this all the time. It's like a second monitor, basically. But as, except for me, a second monitor, it has actually a tracking system. So if you have a robust iPhone, it works best with LiDAR. I uh, should be able to just move this around enough. There we go. All right, so this is kind of where we're, where we're at. I, I have this set up here in case the whole mocap suit won't work, right? Uh, on the live demo with a lot of iPhones and just a lot of network. These things work best uh, because these are inertia suits. They don't know what's going on in the whole environment. So if there's magnetic interference or stuff, that, that can affect it. So it's best to work in a place where you don't have these kind of things. But I'm hopeful that it's going to work. Um, so yeah, I'll just play it back here. This was just a simple way of, of setting this up. Where, so this is all working in real time right now. So I can actually you know, start filming it, do a shot, and all that cool jazz, right? So this was just a quick demo um, of the virtual camera, and I'm going to try to combine this, right? So let's just disconnect it for now. And I'm going to ask somebody from the audience to hold the camera while I try to perform the, the mocap, right? Um, I have a setup here. Uh, actually, I'm going to go, you know what? I'll try to do it just from scratch. Why not? Because this is a class. I mean, why would I just show a complete project where you can go from scratch, right? Um, we'll delete the cube, right? <laughs> All right. So I like to start with a plane because it just gives me the ground uh, where I want to work with. So I'll just pull this to the left screen and open up Rococo Studio here that I actually have already an animation set up here um, that I recorded before uh, at home. So I'm going to just put this, get this live streaming into Rococo um, and this is the setup, right? You go to the Rococo plugin, um, which is provided by the suit company, and you basically start the receiver. Oh, before you start the receiver, you need to also activate it here. 
uh, make sure your ports are set up and everything, it should just work. So yes, it worked. It detected that there is an incoming data stream from, um, from Rococo. And from here, uh, the next step is to work through actually attaching a prop or a, or a character. So it needs a character to stream to, right? So let's grab a character here. Um, I have the Y bot. I like the Y bot because it's just so simple to work with and it just doesn't get uh, in the way, right? All right, so if we have the character set up here, now we should be able to select the actor here, hit bar, and, and that's my name of the character. And uh, the next step is to click auto. So that populates the whole bone structure so we don't have to deal with that, which is really, really nice. And um, set as typos. And when I play back, I think we're miss this. So yes, so this is kind of working, right? So we're streaming live from an existing animation. Now you can see that the post-processing here is working uh, with foot locks and it's just doing a, a bunch of things that do not work in real time on these suits for a reason. It needs the processing to get that, to get that, to get that ahead. Um, so remember, whenever you work with, the, with these, it's a good idea to stream it, but it's even a better idea to actually save it and then export it as a FBX so you get all the fancy things with, like, with footlock and you get all the control and precision that you'd, lead, that you'd like to have, right? All right, but this isn't fun. I mean, I'm, I'm just playing back an animation, right? What if we want to do this in the suit? Well, let's try it. So, make sure you have a big, beefy power bank. This actually works. Uh, I, I, I wasn't able to dis discharge this suit, even working for hours with it, which was a pretty amazing, but pretty robust. You can just go on and on and on with this stuff. So I'll just plug it in. Oh, we're, we're green, which is a good news. And yes, gloves ready, Every, it just connected magically. Yeah, yes. Uh, it didn't even work at home, so that's awesome. Um, all right. So yeah, I'm, I'm, a, bit, I'm a bit mangled, but uh, the, the, the way to, to actually calibrate it is to, um, and I'm gonna need some help here. So this is the only part that doesn't that needs assistance, right, to get the headband out. So I'll put the headband on. Uh, let's follow the actor here. Oh, straight pose. All right, calibration complete. And I didn't even put the legs on yet, so they're all wonky. Let's get the legs on. So I, no, oh, so I normally work in socks here, but for a reason I have shoes now. Um, all right, let's try again. We'll just follow the actor here. Um, yes, so it doesn't get in the way. And just hit Control B. All right, we're in Blender. Yay, it actually works. So. Uh, let, let's just do some tests. I'll walk around and see if how much it actually works. And I'm going to just record it because it's working. All right, recording. Follow my character so we see what's going on. Here we go. Welcome to Blender Conference. Um, if anybody wants any motion or has ideas, I can create motions with this. I'll send it to you. Karate. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll show you where the suit 
actually doesn't work, what it doesn't like. It depends on the, the, the system that it has to have foot placement. So if I do something like, let's see, um, this will work. If I jump on here, you can see what's going on, right? All right, but there's a way to fix this, right? Because there is a system where it actually can calculate this elevation, but you need to know how far you stepped up. So that's one thing to uh, take into consideration. Next thing is just putting your, your feet up, so up like this. You see what happens? <laughs> yeah. It's very uh, based on the fact that it needs that foot placement, right? So if you know what you're doing with your foot, you'll be fine, right? So I'm just recording this. I can keep on going and going. This is like a 30-minute take. Um, but I'd like to also have this, you know, it's visualized in Blender right now. But what should I do with this, right? So um, you can do a bunch of things, right? Because you can upload the character from, um, from any software, uh, like Character Creator, Blender. Uh, AutoRig Pro works, works really well with this system that I might be able to demo here. And basically, you will get IK here, which would be amazing. Um, all right, I'm going to stop the take. Just stop it. And that's processing now with the footstep, foot locks. And just play it back. Let me just get to the right. As you can see, the foot locks do a world of difference. Now, this used to be really, really hard to do uh, and annoying, right? Because it just, it just couldn't handle foot locking uh, back in the day. You'd had stuff go in it. You'd, you'd have things like going all around the place. And for the past, I'd say, three months, last three months, the innovation of the software has caught up to the hardware here. That's why I'm presenting this, because, you know, half a year ago, you would have, like, weird things going on here. And that's, that's kind of the, 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 it just gets the job done here. And I love these, this, this, this product in the, in the sense where I used to say before that mocap suits are outdated because I just looked at all these AI tools and you could do it with AI. I mean, AI is amazing, right? But the problem with AI is that you have to upload it somewhere. That's one thing. Or process it, right? And that takes a lot of resources and stuff. While the suit here, you're in business. You're, you already have um, a take that you can work on and just do a bunch of things on. So... Um, I'd like to now try to combine the, 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 the two things that I showed, right? Let's try to do the virtual cam, right? So I'll be just doing a performance and somebody from the audience will just grab my phone and try to record me and at the same time we'll try to capture that camera data into Blender. See if it will work, right? Um, let's try it. So while the receiver is still getting all the data here, let's just jump back, back into the character mode in, in real time. And let's just get here to the virtual camera. Uh, connect. Oh, let me just check my Wi-Fi here. That's good. Scan QR code. Sorry for that, just technical, technical difficulties. Yes, it connected, cool. All right, let's get that on and connect it. Um, move around the camera. Yes, you're moving now. All right, cool. Try to position yourself. Just looking at the, uh, you should be able to see on the viewport. Uh, look around, maybe I'll, let's see if I can, Grab this camera. Um, if you could just one thing. Disconnected for reasons. 
uh, so I can just move up here. Come on, come on. So the thing with offsets, right? So you're here. I'm trying to just, right, right. That's about right here. And now hit that little button. You should be able to get control back. back. The yes, the same button. Cool. All right, awesome. Oh, but my character died. Look what happened. Let's go back to the character. Uh, it is actually receiving. Oh, it is. All right, cool. Uh, all right. So I think we're in business. Let's just get more frames in here. Uh, I don't know, like 4,000 frames. Uh, so we have some leeway. Get rid of these two key frames for the, just get the camera going. Do uh, auto keyframe, right? And it's, I think we're set up, I think. We can trigger a recording here, which is really nice, straight from the plugin, and the plugin will tell Rococo Studio to start recording, and then we have everything in sync, and that's really nice. So it kind of works like Unreal Engine with the, virtu with the VCAM. It's the same kind of deal. We're, we're getting close to what Unreal Engine is doing um, just by using these two things, right? So I'm just going to start recording, and let's see. So let me just get this. All right, so try to record me here as I talk around. So I'll be just, you know, something like this. Get some close-ups. Oh, I'm not actually recording, right? I need to hit play here. Boom. Okay. Let's try it one more, because the, actually the app has a feature for recording. If you just hit this button here, with, with this, I think, the red one and the play button, so that will actually play it back. Three, two, one, and is it recording? No? Did it trigger? Um, all right, it's recording. Let's, let's, okay, keep on moving around. So I'm just walking around here. but. Ah, my guy stopped. But anyway, I think it's the ports maybe trying to fight each other. Start receiver. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, hit stop now. Oh, there we go. So the camera got recorded. Yay! <laughs> it worked. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Um, Thank you. Um, this was stressful. Um, yeah, live demos are always this kind of w w weird, but it, uh, but it actually works. I, I mean, the, we're getting previous here in Blender. We could record this, this character here already, the keyframe, but that would overload the system. So it's kind of easier to just use this, you know, recording here plugin and work from here rather than, um, you know, switching back and, back and forth with programs. I'm actually running at 200 FPS, which is boost mode here. With all this Wi-Fi going on here, I'm pretty impressed that the suit is able to handle, um, you know, all that, right? And it's actually, and it just works, right? I'm just going to stop it. So that's processing the recording. Now, all right. So we had a recording. We had our VCAM demo. Um, now we can have a kind of a look of uh, how to export this data and get, in, uh, get it into, ca into characters, right? Because that's, that's actually interesting. Well, there's two ways. You can, you can actually import a character straight into Rococo Studio, which is um, very useful. Let me just go back here. Characters. Um, it supports a bunch of things. You can use an Unreal Engine character, a Mixamo character, uh, most Blender characters, um, Ready Player Me, iClone characters, character creator. So you're pretty much set with this with this stuff. Um, so we'll use the uh, the Y bot. And you should be able to straight import here. And this is just a drag and drop situation where you basically drag and drop. And you can see the character already performing here. And this is really nice. And I'm t I'll tell you exactly why, right? Because you can do adjustments on the fly. Because when I go up here, um, there's, these, uh, there's this thing called uh, elevation tracking, which is this stuff, right? 
um, if you want to deal with that. But also what I love here is adjusting, right? Adjust arms, adjust that. So if I need a wider spread, I can do it. It's all happening in real time. Uh, I can adjust this, this, this. And this is really cool. Like this is just amazing, right? That I can do this in real time on any character. And I've even pushed this system to upload um, metahuman meshes. So, I mean, it can handle a lot or a character creator mesh. Um, just generally a very heavy character, you can already see what's going on, right? And record this directly into the FBX of this character with, with these setups, right? This really, I mean, I think it works. Um, but just in general, I think this is one of the, the most, like this is what you pay for in this stuff, where, where you want to work and just do minor corrections here. So I kind of... Retargeting, retargeting is a big issue, um, and, and, and um, it's, it's not an easy thing to do retargets, right? And this Rococo Studio just really helps you with that. Uh, and I just want to say that it's amazing that you can have it. So I'll just jump out of this character. So I'll disconnect him now. So he pops back into, the, into my guy. Now I'll just go briefly over the exporting. How much time do we have? 50, all right. Uh, we're about 50, 50 minutes, um, so let's select the clip. So let's select our last clip here that we recorded. Double click. And we get a bunch of presets here. Now presets are really important when it comes to um, just dealing with characters, right? I personally work with Mixamo rigs because they're just, they're, they, they've become the JPEG of motion capture, I would say. Um, now, the next one is Unreal Engine characters, which I would say are the EXR PNGs of, 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 of this, and, and, and Human IK if you work with um, Maya, uh, iClone, and so on. But I really like Mixamo and Unreal Engine uh, characters because they just work, right? I can get the data really fast in and convert it and do a bunch of things that would be really, really uh, annoying and hard to do. So let's, let's just export this uh, as a Mixamo character mm, and just work with it. So just go here. Uh, I like to name these clips so I know what they're actually named. Blender conference 2023 and just export. Now, let me stop this. Um, so we have already the keyframes for our camera here. Let's save it, let's save it, let's save it. Oh, I think my phone is still controlling. This is really cool, actually. Is it, is it still working here? Yes, cool, I can use still the phone here. Adjust focal lens. This is really, really nice. This is, I mean, because you can just work on the on the go, on the go with this. I usually have this propped up here on a on a tripod and work on a bigger iPad, right? So I just have a, a second screen, and then I can pull back and, and add another uh, view, so I can have different views, right? Um, let's pull up a, a scene that I've actually prepared here. Um, recent. So this was the, 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 the last scene that I did. Uh, I wanted to export this character actually, right? So I think we're done. Oh, it exported. So we can grab this FBX now. Now I'm gonna go over just a bunch of quickly software that, that I use here uh, on a daily basis to just get these things done, right? Um, one is, um, let's go to the plug plugins. So number one is Rococo. You can use it for just the whole thing and also retargeting. The plugin is free, so you can retarget to any uh, mesh. And one thing here uh, worth noting here is is the, let me just find it quickly. Auto Rig Quick Pro, here we go. 
So AutoRig Quick Pro is an amazing plugin. Um, let me just get my bone structure. Let's actually open that uh, last file. Sorry for that. Uh, we'll work on what we actually recorded on the session. Oh, not this one. So Quick Rig, um, it's a paid plugin, and it's totally worth the money. Uh, I'll explain why. Uh, no limbs found. Add limbs. Uh, let me just. Oh, here we go. This is the button that I wanted to show. So you can see that you can import and get IK working in all of these characters and these systems, uh, which is the U UE4 manic and UE5 mani. mani. Uh, a DAS character, all of this will work, right? So in this case, we have a Mixamo character. Uh, let's try it. So we'll clear the current limbs, all right? And this should automatically detect um, what we need, right? And let's just go over here. Quick rig, animation. We can bake the animation, right? And let's do IK, IK. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this will work. Do we have an animation in here? Oh, we don't have an animation in here. Um, so let's actually just use that, the file that, that already had the animation imported so we just don't waste uh, more time. Uh, All righty, get it back here and go to uh, Auto Rig Pro, Quick Rig. Select Mixamo. All right. Uh, you can import the bone mapping from file, but we already have that. I think it works. Spine, leg. Yep, I think most of it is there. If I'm missing something, we'll see on the retarget. Um, so we'll just select this quick rig. Uh, leg, leg left is missing required input. Foot. Left, leg, 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 leg. So does it have a search? No, nope, doesn't have a search. Let's just go here. Ooh. Nope, I don't want the hips. Hmm. All right, it's, it's actually attacking my hips here. Uh, let me just hear. Uh, all right, let's not waste time on this. I'll, I'll direct to the videos that actually Rococo Studio did, and they use this to do to you to, to basically get IK working. And there's also two, one more plugin that I'd, li I'd like to mention that basically turns Blender into um, iClone, essentially. You can, do, you can use animation layers in such an easy way, which is a lifesaver for this stuff. Um, so yeah, we went over the, 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 the system. Just a quick recap of a typical animation studio pipeline that usually works um, it's the old way of doing things. Uh, we've been, I've been learning about this all on the Unreal Engine Fellowship, and it just shows um, how much has changed, right? Because this used to be the typical animation where you go with the storyboard, modeling, rigging, all that, all that, all that, all that fun jazz. But we're in real time here, and the real time kind of works like this. Um, it's a bit different. It's set up. In a, uh, in a way where we pull from the traditional way of making things, but we just use Unreal Engine to, to visualize everything and, and, and get get working with the with the with the pixels already real time with the ready pixels, right? Now I asked on the Unreal Engine Fellowship how many people work with Blender. Uh, I'm on the European. Uh, this is the European Animation Fellowship, and uh, half of the people raised their hands, and I'm like, awesome, because that means that. Blender is uh, just something that people use daily as a driver to get stuff into Unreal because it's just so robust and just works so well if you know both tools. 
Now, I, I kind of uh, try to get people out of Maya, <laughs> um, and they, they, they feel that they want to make the leap, and, but they always ask me, oh, will I be able to do this and that and that? And the answer is yes, you can. It's just getting a few plugins, but the same is with Maya, if you think about it. You, you need a, a vanilla Maya. Uh, it's not that interesting. It's all to do with the plugins that are the, the interesting things that, that make it all work. Um, I'll just run a quick video here. Um, to let me just dis disconnect the suit here so we get back online. Actually, I just have the videos here. No, oh, come on. Video not playing. All right, let's just go back to my videos. I'll talk over this because this is obnoxious music. Um, so I, I'm, I'm fascinated by motion capture suits, and I was able to work um, with the most high fidelity one, which is the OptiTrack. And it gave me a big perspective on how this stuff needs to be set up. You need an operator with this system. You need a 10 gigabit network. You need 48 cameras, right? Um, so my idea, I came to a workshop to just show students how to work with mocap in the similar fashion that I'm doing here, but without the, the complex setup. Now, the, I quickly rigged up the prop that I uh, 3D scanned on set, and then this is the same concept that I'm kind of showing you on the Blender, right? A rigged up character working together, but in this case, we're actually holding um, physical objects that are tracked and recorded in take recorder, right? So I asked this, uh, so basically the, the whole idea was how to teach skateboarding in mocap. Um, so I would, as you can see, I would run around, try to get cool angles and as a, as a DP, and we would switch uh, between this all that. Um, I think this was fascinating in the way where uh, I was able to all Without, uh, like in this case, without Unreal Engine, it would not be possible for me to actually visualize this on set and have it working immediately, right? Uh, and this is where the, like, the, the, the fun part comes because um, all of this is practically zero cleanup. There's only just some minor adjustments that you need to do, uh, but it's usually to do with just making the animation a, mo a, a lot smoother, or, but you can see how much fidelity comes into these motions. And comparing this to something like inertia suits uh, that kind of figure out what's going on, on uh, to, they, they kind of estimate what's going on. So you can fool them, right? While here, it's like 48 red cameras looking at only infrared spots. And yeah, and the engine was, the, the, the whole system was able to, to, to figure, to, to pull it off and actually record it in real time. So this was, I'm really proud of this, and this was a way to just show that you do not need different motion capture, I mean, you don't need to be, um, sorry, I wanted to say this, that, um, that you can combine different types of mocap into uh, one production, and it doesn't really matter what suit you use, if it's a Rococo suit, or if it's a move AI thing, or, it's, or if it's any other solution that you could find, it happens to be that the animator is in charge because there always will be cleanup. Even on the OptiTrack system, they, deal, they have problems with finger tracking because they use Manus gloves, and that's a separate company, so you need like a separate software to just use that. So this is where, you know, where I pop this all in, and I just do some, you know, magic and software and I kind of I'm already there while they are still configuring the system so it's a really really interesting way so this was the exquisite corpse um, just an explanation um, as I said um, so yeah and I, I take part in these fellowships and teach students about motion capture recording this live and you can see my beautiful wife here Karina and two um, this is a professional actor that I also invited on set um, that I asked to, can you help us 
teach a bunch of animators and people who just are, you know, really interested in mocap on how to act for motion capture. And this, this, this happened to be the most interesting um, class that I, uh, um, as a, I wouldn't say class, but it was an experience where she would put all her energy into showing what it is to actually do mocap. And she did not have any experience working with mocap, but she's a professional actor. So her, her experience with, with, with this was that this is like theater, right? You can, I mean, mocap suits, um, because she worked in series, in, in normal um, film production, TV, classical production. And one thing that she told me, uh, Manu, which is the actor, actress, that usually when she works on a set, there's the DP, right? And he has a camera, there's a second camera, and they usually have like markers, they do a scene, and they can't really, you know, use the whole body of, of, of emotion to, to work around this, because you have to think about where the camera is pointing. But in mocap, you figure out the camera later if you want to, right? And that's a whole different world of, of just working with this stuff. And it's even, it pulls, uh, it takes different kind of emotions to work with this stuff uh, than working in traditional film production. And that was really fascinating to me. Um, I'll, I'll throw a few snippets here if you'd like to take screenshots or ask me about the software. Um, character animation is hard, right? Uh, I've been doing it from Connect, from Markerless. Uh, in this case, uh, this is a uh, a screenshot from Glycon 3D, uh, which is a software that just you can use VR, any VR, HTC Vive, and also the Quest, the Quest, to uh, essentially get motion straight into Unreal Engine, Blender, or any other uh, uh, program that supports skeletal meshes. Right? Uh, I've I've talked to the developer, and he's just also pushing the boundaries of how to democratize this stuff. Because this, if you think about it, this is democratizing it. I know how much it costs to set up a robust OptiTrack, you know, system. It's beyond anybody's budget, probably around, you know, normal people. Uh, well, this, th these things are, are becoming more accessible. Um, Yes, character animation is easier now. Uh, this was a, yeah, this is if you, if you want to go and check out Move One. It's been just released yesterday. I was on the beta, and this is also a just a wonderful piece of software that you just point one camera, you get a take, and it actually deals better than some mocap suits with stuff like touch. So if you want to clap or do things like this, I would use Move AI, right? Because it just, does a better job or there's more, um, there's more, it just does it really, really well compared to suits. But if you're working in a suit, you can get so much more takes and you don't need to upload it and you work in real time. So it's a whole different story, right? So do we, do we really need to go this, this high end, right? Uh, well, if you want to capture dogs, of course, right? Um, this is probably the next frontier of motion capture suits, right? How do you get our pets into this, which would be fascinating. Um, I know that AutoRig Pro is, is, on the, uh, is really, really pushing the boundaries, and they have some amazing rigs that you can work with, with this stuff and just get mocap into it. Um, I didn't want to go much into this, but this is what I, I'm passionate about 3D printing. And I tried to invent my own helmets, head cams. And my idea for this was to, well, if you, you can use a broomstick and it will work, right? You can use anything. But once you work for a couple of hours in these things, or you put an actor and you tell him, all right, can you just put that 10 kilo hel helmet on your head and start working? He'll get tired, you know, his head will collapse and all that. So I started thinking, well, it's, all, it's, it's actually a really hard problem to get, um, this, get a phone in front of your face, right? Because the phone is usually heavy. So I started experimenting. Well, what if I put the phone's center mass here, use a mirror, and it actually worked. So 
Um, if, if anybody would like to have fun with this, I'm open sourcing this, this helmet. It's just open source helmet. You can print it out and just have fun. I'll just ask me, ask me about the link and I'll, and I'll provide it to you if you'd like to print out one of these and just, just use it. I mean, I've, I've seen so many ideas of doing helmets, but I really think that this one is, is interesting because it just, uh, it's just a lot of research because if you put the phone just like this, it's fine if you do talking, but if you really want to do like punching or something that's dynamic, you'll get wobble and that wobble goes into the motion capture and you don't want that. So I'm, I'm just figuring this out as we go. So hardware and software working together, together helps this, it helps to do this job, right? This is the backstage of how an actual, I run a fellowship, three monitors, right? I use a 3D connection also, which is amazing, by the way, um, just, just in general as a hardware thing that you can rely on, on virtual productions or generally working in a studio environment because you can map everything out and, and have it in one place. So, and I invite, you know, um, this is Rococo's idea, much more cleaner than my design, right? But it's, uh, it's actually really, really well thought out and industrial designers, can shine with this because it's it's solving a, a really hard problem of how to work with this stuff and don't make it over cumbered, don't make it uh, too hard to work with and all that, right? Um, yeah, just a bunch of software, Rococo Studio, I mentioned AutoRig Pro, AutoRig QuickWig, animation layers, virtual camera and Glycon 3D if you're into VR and would like to use VR as your source of mocap data. It's really good, um, it actually works. Uh, and there's also one more software that I'd like to mention. It's called Animation Prep Studios, based on Unity also. Um, it can also do this, the same thing, similar to Glycon, works in this, in this, um, in this realm. Well, I was, I was, I'm proud to be here on the Blender conference. Um, um, if you are interested in a suit, uh, or in this case, um, reach out to Rococo, tell them Blender Conference 2023, that's the code, use it. They'll give you access to it, they might, give you, they might send you the suit, they might give you a really good deal to just get going, because they're super, super talented people that really want to help democratize uh, motion capture. Um, just in general, and they provide a bunch of things that can that help us as designers, right? Uh, all right, um, I'm gonna slowly ease out questions time. I know that there might be a bunch of questions. I'd like to have this more of a, just not me talking, uh, but actually get some feedback. Uh, what would you like to learn? Maybe we can record something for you and send it over. Thank you, and I'm opening the floor to questions.